Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next edition of our Digital Dialogue series. Um, I'm joined by Marianne Hendricks, the Managing Director of Moonen. Um, Marianne, how, how are you, first of all? Hi. Hi, Rory. Thank you. Yes, I'm very fine. Perfect. Well, I'll, I'll start with an easy question that we um, tend to ask everyone. Um, what is your greatest frustration with the market at the moment? Yeah, it's maybe a very obvious answer, but it's, it is, of course, uh, the pandemic. It, uh, mm -hmm. it is a bit of a fr frustration and not from the uh, uh, customer side, but mainly from, well, distribution, uh, regulations, uh, well, building a yard in these hard times. Uh, well, yeah, it is uh, challenging. Sure. But obviously, the, the pandemic, um, we've heard time and time again now, has actually yielded quite um, positive results for, for shipyards in particular and the brokerage community. So are there any positives that you've taken out of this and, and has your business evolved at all to deal with it? Uh, yes, from the customer side, um, I think it's been very positive and uh, we've seen that uh, the customers have really shown their interest. In the beginning of the pandemic, it was a bit hard because we noticed that well, it tend to almost uh, stand still. Uh, mm -hmm. It was also a bit scaring, well, because nobody knew what, where it was heading. But uh, we were lucky, and uh, I, I, it's not only luck, of course, but uh, we were very happy to sell two boats in uh, the pandemic. And, well, yeah. you have to change the way you speak to customers or approach them or do the sales processes. It's a different way, but it brought good for us. And can you tell me a little bit about how the business had to evolve to, to deal with that? Because obviously clients weren't able to visit the yards. No one could travel. You couldn't go to them. So how did you manage that process and and, yeah. and, and how successful has it been? Boring times. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not boring at all, but it's uh, challenging. So no visits and because, well, the, the world was closed. And as we are in an international business, uh, mm -hmm. normally we travel the world. We, uh, we fly a lot and we meet with customers um, uh, in their houses or they come to the shipyard. Uh, so you have to be creative in finding solutions. And um, uh, we adapted very quickly to uh, all these methods like uh, Google, Meet Me, Zoom, uh, Teams, and all these uh, things. The good thing about this is uh, that also the customers, um, they adapted very easily to these systems. And uh, mm -hmm. previously, you would never expect that, in fact, you would enter into a Zoom call with a possible buyer because you enter in fact like you're watching into my room mm -hmm. now uh, and i'm watching yours uh, you are entering their private area and private space and uh, mm -hmm. so in that way uh, it feels familiar uh, from mm -hmm. the start and uh, there's other, one other thing which is very good about meeting on zoom or teams or whatever because uh, building a boat in general, a process of building a boat is a long process and there's a lot of decisions. Uh, first from the decisions, do I want this boat or am I going to purchase this boat? And if you did, um, interior, colors, uh, styling, uh, milestones, contract, a lot of decisions, decision after decision has to be taken. If you mm -hmm. invite visitors uh, or clients to the yard, for a visit, let's say three days, uh, then you have so many decisions to take um, that they may even feel uncomfortable because it is an overload of decisions and questions. Mm -hmm. If you ha are able to cut these into, let's say, 12 Zoom calls, so every mm -hmm. end of the week, it gives them the opportunity to take a relaxed process and all the decisions that are taken, maybe the answers are even more profound because people take the opportunity, oh, I have to investigate, I take my time to look at it, uh, I do a bit on research online, maybe they speak to friends, daughters, uh, husbands, whatever, and then mm -hmm. finally come with an answer, we decide and we proceed. So, so it was even more. Uh, so do you think it sort of flattened the curve then? You mentioned the, the intensity of the yard visits and the amount of decisions that would have to be made in the space of three days or, or less, I'm sure it is sometimes. By, by spreading out the decision-making process, do you yeah. think it's become m maybe not more rational, but a, a little bit more controlled rather than feeling like things are getting forced through and, 
And could that have a positive impact on things like change orders where maybe an owner felt rushed into a decision and then later on they decided they, they didn't want that? I'm sure there will still be change orders, but... Yes, there will there always be uh, will be, and especially in in like we we build on spec, you will have change orders because it is impossible to build a hundred percent fitting yard. There is always personal wishes, uh, but yes, I do think that uh, that that a digital uh, process helps the customer uh, to get through a more relaxed uh, process. So. Mm-hmm. Also, after the pandemic, and that's where we are heading now, I think Zoom calls will remain part of our business and uh, it will help. And also, uh, the first showing around on the shipyard, it can easily be done um, Mm -hmm. by phone or by by Teams or or FaceTime. And if you do this, then they get a feeling and maybe they decide, okay, yes, I come and visit. But... um, yeah, it helps. And so I think it will be a kind of a hybrid uh, mm-hmm. formula where we use all the methods of communication. And that's you the men- process. You mentioned um, speaking to owners and they're, they're in their own environment, they're at home. Do you think that would be a benefit particularly maybe to first-time buyers or something? Because obviously with the size and complexity of yacht projects, there's a lot to understand, there's a lot to take in. And if you're in the shipyard, it's almost an overload um, in terms of the amount of information that's coming in, both um, in terms of decision making and probably sensory overload with the sounds and the smells and everything that's going on. Do you think maybe for a first time buyer being able to to go over decisions in the comfort of their own home might be a benefit so as not to not to scare them almost? No, but it works. It works. In fact, uh, two ways. Uh, one mm-hmm. way, the um, the let's say the, the the buyers they are in their environment, so uh, uh, it's their uh, feel good place, and uh, mm-hmm. they feel comfortable. And uh, we plan the time they feel best, the suitable. They can do their sports in the morning and have the call in the afternoon, no problem. So also international time zones uh, is not an issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the other hand. Uh, it gives the shipyard or the designers um, a little inside information in their homes because you see a bit of style, you see a bit of how mm-hmm. they live, um, how, what kind of colors they use. And of course, it could be that they are in their summer house, or but uh, it gives more information. And uh, so that helps us to tailor their wish even better. And uh, sure. yeah, being in your own environment, um, yeah, it feels comfortable when you are here at the shipyard. Of course, we try everything to to make them feel at home and make them comfortable. But it's still called a visit. Mm-hmm. And so it is a visit. And now it is, well, we visit them instead. They visit us. So, yeah, there is a significant change. And before we get on to talking about the sort of hybrid nature of the sales process in the future, when we spoke previously, you mentioned that you'd sold two boats over this period mm-hmm. purely through digital means. Can you tell me a little bit about that experience, what the challenges were, um, what you've learned, and then perhaps we could talk about what you might choose to keep moving forward as well? Well, the hardest thing, of course, is that you cannot drink champagne together when yeah. you celebrate. So. <laughs> But, um, well, yeah, the digital process of selling a boat, um, first, uh, you have to have your processes and your, your, your devices uh, uh, ready. And also the processes of, let's say, the, the contractual part, uh, you need lawyers or you need a broker or a surveyor. So you have to enter them into the call. Mm-hmm. And But then... At a certain moment in time, it comes to the agreement. And normally you would shake hands and you would uh, maybe go to, to an office and, and, and sit together and, and put a, the stamp on paper and a signature, which is not possible. So mm-hmm. there it comes to uh, first trust because you speak to each other online and you do this kind of virtual handshake like, okay, we have an agreement. And then you have to... Um, have the actual agreement uh, in written. So, mm-hmm. uh, and it was not possible to travel. So you had to 
I had to put my signature on paper on the things we have discussed, send it across to the customer uh, and with uh, their signature. And there has to be a lawyer involved that it is all uh, official documents and because it, mm. there is a lot of money involved. But it starts with trust because that first virtual handshake is based on trust. Both of the customers were not able to travel to the shipyard. So everything, like I said, by FaceTime, we were walking through the shipyard and we, we did all the contractual things online by sharing documents, by entering people into the call, by getting advice from a lawyer, from a broker, from a, a surveyor. So um, yeah, the process was different, but uh, mm -hmm. the result was, um, well, was great. And with one of the customers who bought uh, a yacht in the, during the pandemic, I had never uh, a live contact. So I'm still uh, in contact with this happy owner, but mm -hmm. only online. And the other customers, they meanwhile, um, their boat is still inbuilt, it's not delivered yet. And uh, they are meanwhile uh, open to travel again. So they visit uh, the shipyard. And, uh, but yeah, the contracts were signed digitally. Looking at this sort of um, the hybrid um, sort of system that you suggested in the future, then um, is it just a, a case of because the the idea of um, the superjet sales process not requiring face to face meetings would have been so foreign um, before the pandemic. People have said it would never work. Um, it's never going to happen. And moving forward, I'm sure people will want the face to face element of it because obviously it's it can't be perfectly replaced, but. What elements do you see keeping and what elements would you like to return to how they were? Um, I would keep the uh, digital platforms for, let's say, decision making. So mm -hmm. uh, keeping the process running and, and just ticking off lists like, OK, uh, that you agree on things and, and you can do that in short meetings. Mm -hmm. But if it comes to, um, well, of course, first meeting your customer, that is nothing is better than doing this face to face and uh, sure. you cannot replace that because buying a super yacht is not buying a business or you don't buy a vacuum cleaner you buy a dream and mm -hmm. buy a whole set of emotions with it because when you buy it you see yourself and your family and friends and you see yourself on boat on this boat you want to so you, 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 in fact, you buy an emotion and that emotion mm -hmm. is wrapped by a beautiful super yard. So if you speak to your, uh, uh, clients, then you know what, what thrives them, how their family is built up, what they love, um, maybe how they live, where they wish to travel, where do they want to take the boat? Uh, are they open to, to charter? So over a conversation with a nice meal, it speaks so much easy because on Zoom, mm -hmm. one is speaking, the other is listening. And uh, so even if there is more uh, people in the conversation, you feel uh, that you have to wait for your turn to speak, which comes very naturally when you are somewhere sitting over a coffee. Well, mm -hmm. you, you can easily interrupt or you, you can read somebody's face, um, which is not that specific. You, you, Zoom or, or Teams is close, but not as close as real life. Sure. Looking towards the future again, um, I guess part of the, the benefit of this process has been the efficiency of it. So um, removing travel when it's unnecessary, um, using Zoom for decision making, these kinds of things. Um, they can save money, they can save time, they can remove errors. There's all kinds of benefits. What about looking... Um, at the future of things like boat shows then with how effective um online sales have been throughout this pandemic um and there's there's the big boat shows are returning this year do you think their model is effective as it used to be and do you have any views on on how it fits in with the modern type of purchasing Yes, we all had one year or maybe even longer to think about the future and uh, mm -hmm. because this if there is a time that you can change, then this is the time to change. Mm -hmm. um, when I look at the uh, function of boat shows, uh, it is, in my opinion, there's only one function, and that is showing boats to customers who are thinking about 
buying a boat. And whether mm -hmm. it's pre-owned boat or a new boat, that's the only function um, of the boat show. Mm -hmm. Owners decide also uh, what the boat should look like. So if you have systems uh, in the boat or you have uh, interiors, designers or specific features or uh, uh, wave runners or whatever, everything that comes with a boat should in fact be shown on the boat. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the biggest uh, difference I see when I think about the future of boat shows. Today, there are a couple of boat shows. Um, I know I must say, until the pandemic, there were a lot of boat shows that had both a supplier side and mm -hmm. a, let's call it an owner's side. And uh, there was a combination. Um, this combination uh, can be good in some way that you take a customer to um, a supplier or something to show it in detail. Um, on the other hand, um, it makes the shows very busy and mm -hmm. widespread, a lot of, of, of distraction probably for the owners. So if, if I was to judge, I would say um, separate the shows, like only boats with owners and, of course, the stakeholders around them, like the brokers and, and the yacht builders, because, well, that's, that's the closest inner circle around mm -hmm. the boat buyer. And then you have this wider field um, of suppliers and media and, and, and uh, insurance companies. and They're all necessary, absolutely mm -hmm. necessary to build that dream. But they don't have to be necessarily on the premises where the boat show is, from my mm -hmm. perspective. And yep. I, I, I realize I'm stepping probably on, on people's toes here because you can look uh, to it at it on a different uh, from a different perspective that if you have um, interior companies and system integrators and uh, lighting companies available directly at the boat show mm -hmm. you can take a customer to show it which probably makes the decision more easy so it could work from both way but if I had to say I would say keep the, the boat shows as boat shows owners. Mm -hmm. So smaller and uh, maybe like Monaco, for example. Why not? Mm -hmm. Why not setting up Monaco? Let's say from um, uh, from Thursday to Sunday, and mm -hmm. then you have uh, four days or maybe three days owners only brokers, and then from the Sunday, which is a double day, and you have uh, next to the show another show with suppliers, which carries on for the next three days. Uh, so you have a kind of an overlap or something. Maybe it's it's um, it's uh, not such a good idea. I don't know, but I think there are options where you you could have the combination. And, mm -hmm. uh, but the future of Yacho, that is uh, the essence of your question. I think there always will be boat shows because mm -hmm. online sales, brochures, social media, they cannot replace the vibe and the atmosphere of a boat show, impossible. Sure. So they will sure. always remain. And But maybe in a bit of a different form. Um, Monaco also had now one owner's day. And yes. we, that's already a good idea. And mm -hmm. to, to, to bring the owners, the actual buyers who, who are driving our business, put them on a podium. It's their show. And yeah. um, treat them like that because they drive the business. If the owners decide that the boat shows are too busy or too distracted and they are not coming anymore, we're probably selling less boats. Mm. But, yeah, and I, and I think your, your your views echo a lot of what the the major stakeholders in the injury, um, in the uh, industry have said. Um, obviously, Libra and Seabass um, removed their support for Monaco last year. They have subsequently um, are supporting the show again. Now they have this owners' day, but. Um, even I think some stakeholders there believe that this isn't going far enough and that it may require two days for owners or three days for owners or whatever it may be. There's a there's clearly a transitional process where the market is going to have to learn what works for, for both sides, the B2B and the business to, to owner, which, as you say, they should and be on the podium. For the organizer, because for mm -hmm. the organizer, if you change the complete process, uh, the organization, well, they need to to have 
a perfect show because otherwise they may lose their their credibility of bringing that very good boat show to the world. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it is a hard, and I'm I'm very glad that I'm not in their seats. <laughs> Perfect. And one, one thing we mentioned um, when we had our sort of pre-discussion was the, the education level of owners today. Um, and this sort of ties in with um, boat shows, um, digital purchasing, all these, all these different kinds of things. Do you think there has been a, a, a bit of a power shift in terms of the industry traditionally has been not secretive, but not a lot of people know a lot of stuff about super yachts. They're, they're massive, they're complex, they're they're notoriously private, but there is a lot more information available now through various media channels and, and social media. So are you finding that the interactions with potential buyers are evolving and that the power is shifting a little bit more towards the buyer? Yes, you, you can tell that, that people do um, uh, go online and this could be by all means of, of, of online communication, uh, Instagram, uh, uh, Facebook uh, websites, but also in intelligence databases are very popular because mm -hmm. they start with an online uh, comparing of their wishes, their needs and uh, boats. And so there they make their first selection, probably what they do want and what they don't want. Mm -hmm. and as soon as you have uh, had this first information, uh, then you probably either select a broker and then you might select a shipyard or you might select a specific brand or whatever. But the online, uh, let's say the orient and orient, the face orientation phase, I think that's earlier uh, than previously when mm -hmm. it was very common. If you want to buy a boat, you go to a broker. The broker gives you ideas and they present the information to you. And mm -hmm. uh, because it's available all online and we are all online 24 7 worldwide mm. everybody is online if you're not online probably you're dead by tomorrow but it's it's and this helps us so it also means that we have to bring our communication and our information uh, to the audience in a good and proper way so people do invest and with people i mean uh, shipyards suppliers brokers they bring their information mm -hmm. to customers in a better way. We all invest quite a lot in, in digital where we used to um, uh, invest. If you look at the marketing budget, we used to invest quite a lot in print media. And mm -hmm. uh, there always will remain print media because we all want to look at these glossy magazines and read about nice net destinations and have a look inside uh, all the yachts. But there's a lot of information that can be found online. For example, mm -hmm. uh, if an owner wishes to know the difference in speed, um, why should I pick aluminum instead of steel? Or maybe a GRP boat is better for me because I want a fast boat. Oh, I want a long range because, because I want uh, to do long range traveling. What's the benefit of having a, a tow tender? Or what's the benefit of having a shadow boat? There are lots of things that need decisions. And they don't want to be forced at the <coughs> with this decision. That information and, and pre-decision process is long before that. And that's mm. all online, if you ask me. Well, I was just thinking when you were when you were reeling off some of those examples i was just thinking yeah i've written about that i've written about that so there's, there's plenty of information out there for mm -hmm. for people that want to find it either via cpot news or um any other sort of legitimate yeah. resources that are out there um fine as, as a sort of final point then um i just wanted to ask you about um how it's been going under the new ownership obviously i think the last time we saw each other face to face was in monaco after they had announced yeah. the, the takeover and since then moon and have sold a number of um vessels so could you just tell me a little bit um what life's been like under the new ownership and whether you think it's been a success and what the future looks like? Yeah, I think it's uh, been a great success and uh, it still is. Um, the uh, new owners, they stepped aboard and uh, they, uh, well, they bought a shipyard because they fell in love with the, uh, the brand and, uh, mm -hmm. and then found out that we also have a, a team of very dedicated craftsmen that really have the power to build the boat, but also with passion. And mm -hmm. uh, all these, 
let's say, these very personal values um, made them take the decision, yes, this is an investment we want to do. But they also realized that uh, it's not a single investment buying a shipyard, especially if you uh, decide to build on speculation, and this is what we Mm -hmm. do, then it requires a long-term investment process because building a boat on spec is, in fact, pre-financing it until an owner steps on board and, well, takes, in fact, over the financing process. But Mm -hmm. we don't build one boat. We build, at the moment, three at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you have to invest in three boats at a different stage, of course. And uh, um, But this strategy... um, building boats on spec and, 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 and giving the production a boost came from the Baxters. They said, mm-hmm. leave in, in the fact that you have to build on speculation and, well, uh, not focus on, on uh, one-offs or refits that much. Because if you want to grow the shipyard, uh, then people need, they look at availability, so it shortens the, uh, uh, the delivery time. And also having this this very good investors behind the shipyard, they give trust and reliability. And Mm -hmm. uh, we are very, very happy to have them. And, uh, well, since the world uh, uh, is open, they are open to travel uh, also. They they come from Australia. And uh, they are going to visit the shipyard next week. So I really look forward to meeting them in person again because Mm -hmm. we did all the board meetings and everything uh, online, uh, which went okay because, well, Mm -hmm. like I said, uh, online is okay, but it's uh, it's nice to speak to them. And I think they, next to that, they are our investors and they are good ambassadors because they really promote the brand. They love the brand Mm -hmm. so much that, uh, well, you can see a twinkle in their eyes when they mention the word Mona. And uh, yeah, so we are very happy to have them. Good, perfect. Well, Marianne, that's, that's everything we've got time for, but I just want to say thank you very much for joining me and um, hopefully we'll be able to have that glass of champagne you mentioned sometime. Oh, today. yes, yes, <laughs> remind me. <laughs> yes, thank you for, the, uh, for uh, asking me for uh, this interview. I Thank you so much and uh, well, enjoy the day.